Hello, my name is Martha Kessler. I work at Cotter International, a consulting firm that specializes in change. After years of researching the factors that contribute to successful change, our founder, Dr. John Cotter, identified four key change principles, head and heart, select few and diverse many, have to and want to, and leadership and management. We use these principles every day with our clients. These principles help to mobilize people to achieve unimaginable results at unprecedented speeds. And they help leaders like you navigate the often turbulent environment of change, increase buy-in from those around you, and help you be more successful in implementing and achieving your objective. In this segment, I'm going to focus on the principle of have to and want to. Ambitious organization change ultimately requires many people to work beyond their normal responsibilities. Change occurs more readily, completely, and sustainably when people want to make the change. A common barrier that many organizations face is when they approach transformation goals in the same traditional way as they do their everyday normal work. And so when it comes to the change, this approach manifests as a mandate. It's your job, just do it. In other words, have to. Without buy-in though, this type of change is not sustainable. Mandated changes are often followed until individuals or departments encounter barriers, at which point they are likely to go back to doing things in just the same old way. This experience also affirms any doubts or suspicions held by these people when they were first asked to make changes. Have to approach on its own does not create a significant number of change agents. To effectively lead organization change, our research and experience shows that you'll be more effective if you can create an environment where people feel as if they want to play a role in producing effective change. In eliciting a want to mentality, you're beginning to create a volunteer army. So how do you do that? Well, you start by engaging with people on a more personal level, because what makes one person want to will differ from the next person to the next and the next. While this may seem daunting, don't pressure yourself to accomplish this task overnight. Just like broad change initiatives, moving people from a have-to mindset to a want-to mindset will take time. Start where the energy is. Those who you know are most likely to need less convincing those early adopters. Help them find their want to. Their want to attitude will help them push through any barriers that might arise. Think about a time when you really wanted something. You pushed through to make it happen, right? You didn't let much get in your way. As the want to mentality evolves and surrounds the change, you can effectively position it alongside the have to approach of many day-to-day -day operations. In other words, we work towards the transformation without disrupting the cadence of daily business. Here's an example from a former global agribusiness client. This client was experiencing low growth over a past decade. Along with its main competitors, the organization controlled about 80% of the food exports around the world. Minimal competition had stamped out innovation and welcomed complacency. Cotter helped the company engage all 7,000 of its employees, yes, I said 7,000 of their employees, across 20 countries and 15 languages to break down national and divisional silos and establish fundamentally new ways of working together. Take part, leave your mark, became their call to action. We partnered with senior leaders to help them articulate a bold path forward and to make the opportunity before them vivid in the minds of every employee. Everyone was invited to help bring it to life. The movement created a volunteer army of over 1,500 employees actively working on 119 initiatives across functions. Innovations were quickly born of this collaboration. One group discovered that underutilization of a port could be subcontracted realizing $1 million in new revenue. Another took on the recalibration of a quality measurement tool in a single plant, yielding results that saved $400,000 annually. For the first time, the division had a way to share and scale these wins. 
people from many different roles, finance managers, plant operators, grain traders, stepped up by choice to champion these strategic projects, uncovering leadership at all levels. Finding the want to is not just about blind optimism, though. Acknowledging challenges and barriers and help your people to, in your organization to understand why the change is necessary, understand why the change needs to take place now, see ways in which they can benefit from successful change, understand what will be different about making the change. These energized volunteers will help you recruit others to see what's in it for them and join the want to ranks. I hope this brief introduction has been helpful to you. As you might imagine, we've covered just the tip of the iceberg on this topic of facilitating behavior change. I invite you to continue your learning by watching our other videos on Cotter's Four Change Principles and by visiting our website at www.cotterinc.com.